Part of using SOLIDWORKS effectively is knowing the tools available as well as the layout of the tools in the interface itself. Now by default SOLIDWORKS comes with quite a few shortcut buttons at the top much like the Microsoft Office Suite. By default, it minimizes the pull-down menus. I actually like to come over to the push pin and actually pin this open because there's quite a few useful tools within the pull-down menus. At the center of this toolbar, you can see the name of the document. And if you hover over it, you can also see the file location. And if you see an asterisk next to the name, that means you haven't saved since the last change to your document. To the right of that is the SOLIDWORKS search. By default, this is set to search through the help. You can also search the knowledge base, the SOLIDWORKS community forum, and you can search for files and models on your computer. Next is the command manager, which is this ribbon interface. This holds most of the tools that you'll be working with, and by default, there are several tabs already added in. You can also add tabs by right-clicking. For example, if we work with a lot of surfacing features or sheet metal features, we can go ahead and activate one of those, and then those tools will be at your disposal. One of the reasons I like to have the pull-down menus pinned to the top is, for example, in this sketch tab, it doesn't have all of the sketch tools available, and I might want to pull down and, for example, pull out, let's say, the dynamic mirror tool or the move tool. These can also be added to the command manager tab, which I'll show in a later video, but it's nice to have quick access to these pull down menus. Underneath the command manager is the feature manager design tree. As you can see at the top, it has the name of my part, and below you can see several different items. At the top you can see there's a option for material, and this is how you're going to specify the material of your part or assembly. And by default, there's three planes for your three standard views, along with the origin. Under that is actually the feature history of the part. And below these is something called the history bar, which you can pull back, and we'll pull it back to actually see how this part was made. So if I drag it above the first feature, and then drag it down, you can see that first this extrusion was created and you can also see a plus sign next to the boss extrude one and what that holds is actually the sketch that was used to create the feature most if not all of your parts will start out this way with a sketch and then some sort of feature to create some geometry from there the corners were filleted you'll notice that there's no sketch involved because those were added directly to the boss extrude feature And then we have a whole wizard hole, and the whole wizard will be covered in a lighter section. And lastly, a cut extrude for those two slots. And these last two features also have sketches associated with them. There are also several tabs next to the feature tree, the component properties, a configuration manager, the dim expert manager, as well as the display manager. And if we pull out the display pane, we can also change how different features or parts, if this were an assembly, are displayed. For example, I can click in the Appearance column under Boss Extrude 1 and change the appearance. In the middle of the graphics area, you'll find the Heads Up display with several useful buttons here. On the left is Zoom to Fit. If you ever lose your model off the screen, a good button to use is Zoom to Fit. It'll bring the model right back in. You can also zoom into an area if you want to get more detail. You can switch back to the previous view. You can also take section views and change the view orientation. And from the view orientation, you can also split the screen into several sections. If I want to, for example, change this to a four view, I can do that as well and get different views of the part. I'll just go ahead and switch this back to a single view. From there, there's the display style. 
Right now it's shaded with edges, but you have several different options to choose from. There's also the view bar. The hide show items allows you to determine which items are shown on the screen and which are not. This can also be accessed from the view pull-down. The next is updating the appearance, as well as applying a scene, which is the background of the graphics area. In this case, if I wanted to change this to look more like an office space background, I could change that as well. I'll leave that as plain white. Then there's the view settings. From here, we can control the display a bit. Real view graphics makes the part look a little bit more realistic as well as shadows and shaded mode. This also is more performance intensive. So if you have a very large part or assembly, you may want to turn those off for better performance. To the right is the task pane. If you click on any one of the tabs, it'll pull it up. The first tab is the SOLIDWORKS resources. The next is the design library. And this is also where you're going to pull toolbox components from. And you can also look in 3D Content Central, which is a database of SOLIDWORKS parts. And there's SOLIDWORKS content that you can also install in. From here is the file explorer. And this is useful if you don't want to exit the interface and you want to open up some documents. You can also get a preview from within the file explorer, which is a useful tool. The next is the view palette, which pertains to drawings, appearance tab, and custom properties that you can add to your document. And the last two items to look at are the triad in the graphics area. It's an easy way to snap to views really quickly. And this is tied directly to the origin as well as the three standard planes that are included in the part. Lastly is the status bar, which will show you the current status of the part. In this case, we're editing the part. If I were to right click on this front face and choose this edit sketch option, for example, it'll toggle between showing that we're editing the sketch and how the sketch is defined. In this case, it's fully constrained.